I don't have I'll any eyebrows out. today. Hey everyone, this is Mary over here at Images on the Page, and today I decided I would do a little bit of my book stacks. My book stats, so just the statistics of kind of what I read in 2018. Now I did it in my bullet journal, which was kind of a pain. Um, I'm gonna have to change that. I might need to do it in an Excel sheet this year, we'll see. But I just, I thought it would be interesting to see kind of what majority of what I read in 2018. And I can't really compare it, unfortunately, to any of my other years just because I didn't track those, so this is the first year I've done that. So I read a total of 69 books and I DNF'd 6. So out of the total 69 books, over 75% of them had queer characters, which makes me super happy. So that means like 25 didn't, but that is I think a big majority. I actually made it kind of more of a priority last year to read queer characters or queer authors just because I hadn't been reading that that much and I would I just like to see the representation so I really wanted to focus on that. It was pretty even split between new to me authors and authors I read before because some of them I did reread so it was about 55 new to me authors in 45 I had read before so it's a pretty even split which I think is pretty good because I used to just kind of reread stuff that I've from authors I'd already read so like if they had a big body of work I would just read their works and I don't think that's a bad thing by any means but it is kind of nice to see that I am trying new things so the majority of the authors I read were female at 65% then it's male at 25% and then unknown and I put unknown either as anthologies because they had multiple authors or if they categorize themselves and as non-binary. Now I did not do a deep dive for what they categorize themselves so if in their like Amazon author profile or their Goodreads one they said he or she I took that to mean those are the pronouns they preferred and that's how they identified and if they just never said or they didn't have one, then I just said unknown because I don't want to assume anyone's gender identity. Now unfortunately, of the 69 that I read, only 25% were um, own voices, which I can say is probably better than I was because I didn't even know that was a category before starting booktube, but I think I'm going to try really hard to prioritize more own voices authors in the coming years just because I do think it's a really great thing and to celebrate those authors who are writing from their own experiences not to say that authors who are writing different perspectives than their own is bad either it's just I feel like sometimes books by cisgendered, often female, often white people are prioritized over own voices. And I could be wrong, but I just have that feeling like, so I would, I would like to kind of focus more on own voices. Now, for the books that I rated, I actually had six cate like a six star review just because um, a Close and Comment Orbit, I actually gave six stars, and if you haven't seen it, I will link my review down below. Basically, I gave it six stars just because it hit so close to home for me. I felt very touched by it. It was very moving. It was very hard for me to read, too, because of how close it felt. Um, but that was only one book. I only had one book that I rated that. The majority of books actually rated four stars, which I think is really good because, I mean, not every, I'm not going to love everything, but it means that I had a mostly pleasant reading experience in 2018. Three and five stars were pretty even. Three stars had 28% and five stars had 26. So I also think that's pretty good. 
of the majority, that was basically what I read. I only had one, literally one one star book and I had two two star books, which I think is really great. I did track kind of the uh, generalizations of the genres I read. Usually I could have said that fantasy was my normal, because I used to just like just read fantasy with a little bit of like romance or mystery thrown in. But this year was a little weird because I was just not in the fantasy zone this year. I just, I didn't have the concentration for fantasy. Fantasy for me is very, it's, I usually read the really epic fantasies, the ones that have really awesome worlds and different rules and cultures and they're just so in depth and I just did not have the concentration to focus on that or figure that out. So actually... The genre I met, read the most of this year was mysteries, which I'm not really surprised by. I got on a big mystery kick the second half, the second half of the year, especially because I found Cole McCade, his Criminal Intention series, which is like one of my all-time favorite series ever. It's own voices, mysteries. I talk about it in my faves of 2018, so if you haven't seen it, I would go check it out if you want to know more about it. But it's basically everything I could ask for in a mystery. It's own voices, it's super queer, it has a lot of representation in different peoples of color, different gender identities, different sexualities, and it's just awesome. Now the second um, biggest section I read this year was graphic novels, which I was actually surprised to see. I do read graphic novels, but it's more of a like every once in a while thing. Um, so that was kind of interesting to see that I did kind of read more of that, which the genres that came in third, fourth, and fifth place are actually YA fa fantasy, YA contemporary, and fantasy, which if you know me or like are friends of mine, you'll know that's actually really surprising. I'm not actually the biggest fan of YA. I think the reason I've been reading a lot more is YA is doing a lot of really awesome stuff with representation and sexuality that it hasn't quite hit the adult markets yet in in much like it's a bit harder to find in adult markets where like I'm constantly seeing things being published even by big name publishers in YA that have to do with a different representation either it being a POC main character or a different sexuality or both or non-binary and that's just awesome to see and since I do want to read more of that representation I've been kind of leaning more towards YA. And then the sixth or the yeah the sixth and seventh placed genres is contemporary just like adult contemporary and then science fiction, which I'm not surprised. I only read two science fiction books this year. Science fiction isn't really my genre, but I absolutely loved Becky Chambers' Wayfair series. The first one is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. The second one is A Closed and Common Orbit. I do plan on reading her third one, Records of a Spaceborn Few. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So I also tracked how I read the books. So I tracked it three different ways. So it's ebook, physical book, and audiobook. Now ebook comes in first at 52%, which isn't really surprising to me because I borrow a lot from my libraries digitally. I use Hoopla and Overdrive. Um, and I can actually read, at least through Overdrive, I can borrow it on my actual Kindle, like Am Amazon, Kin whatever it is, Kindle Oasis, I think is what I have is the physical book, so that was 27%. So I either bought the physical book because I thought I would... I've, I've been trying to not buy as many books, so if I bought the physical book, it's something I thought that I would absolutely love and want to keep anyway. Or I just... I did borrow it from the library. It's a physical book because I couldn't find it digitally. And audiobook came in at 21%. So audiobook and physical book were actually pretty close. That was... And that one, mostly, I do have, I am subscribed to Audible, but I only get a book from them like once a month when I get the free credit because I'm already paying for it. And then I do borrow a lot from the library. 
So those are my book statistics for 2018. Let me know if you guys do something like this or if it's something you like seeing, if like seeing people talk about how much they read of what. And also if you have any ideas of how to make it possibly easier because this, this was a pain, let me tell you. And as you can see, I ran out of squares, so I'm gonna have to figure out a different way to track that if I use it in my bullet journal. But until the next video, ta-ta for now.